Well, welcome everybody. It's Sven Hosford with the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. This is going to be a, a rather unusual podcast uh, for I am in Toledo, Ohio, in the clinic of Anyana Kai, it's called. It's uh, owned by Charlene Bassett Trim, and it's an amazing staff of people that do amazing work, and uh, most of them have been uh, told by the traditional medical system that they should be dead already three or four times over some of them. So it's a pretty amazing group of people. And I am here because one week ago on my birthday at the exact hour of my birth, I had a heart attack and uh, the ambulance driver came and gave me the EKG and said, oh, no, you didn't have a heart attack. And then I went to the hospital and they did the first set of enzymes and they said, nope, it's all clear so far. And they wanted one more set that can make positive. And they wanted to keep me in the hospital. <clears throat> and since the uh, ER doctor said to my face, mold does not cause heart attacks. And I knew 100% for certain that this was caused by mold. I decided to leave and we drove to Toledo and that's where we are now. Uh, Linda and Kitty Nono and I all are suffering from mold poisoning. And this is gonna be the topic of our podcast today, um, specifically how to detox yourself from mold. Um, but this is gonna be a series of podcasts that we're gonna do with Charmaine, who quite simply is, from I've been doing this 20 to 25 years now, and she is the most educated and informed and knowledgeable person about the human body that I have ever met. And I'm not just blowing smoke up her butt. So let's Although we, we do know that blowing smoke up your butt is actually a long time therapy. It's the original <laughs> colonic, right? <laughs> well, uh, my uh, Mr. Sphincter is getting quite a workout here because uh, um, all kinds of things are going into my rectum, which are rather new. I've had colonics before, but one a day is truly an amazing experience. I'm having one colonic a day. I'm on the ozone several times a day, uh, putting in my ears, my mouth, off, up the butt. And uh, so, so it's not just hot air or hey, can I Can I just interrupt on that for one second? Because sure. here's what most people don't understand is that rectal insufflations, which is, you know, putting your ozone up your rectum, up your butt, blowing smoke up your butt um, was the original colonic, but we're talking two separate things, colonic and, and ozone up the butt, right. because we do use ozone in our colonics here. Yes, yes. As yeah. well as many other nutrients. And the mm -hmm. reason why we do that is because the vascular system to the colon is so ext extensive and its job is to absorb fluid from the fecal matter so that you can have a solid bowel movement. So, you know, we put all kinds of cool stuff in our colonics, depending on what's going on with the individual. So obviously heart and cardiovascular, we need vasodilators. So we're going to put in things like, like, like red pepper and the ginkgo and, you know, niacin and things that are going to assist with vasodilating and just, we can get it to your system orally and rectally. And then we're hitting it from both angles. But what's cool about the ozone rectal insufflation where we put the ozone up your butt is that's 98 percent as effective as any other method where they draw out the blood and and ozonate the blood and put it back into the body or run it through the blue you know there's several different ways to use ozone for cleaning up the blood but my whole thing is if it's 98 percent as effective doing rectal insufflations the ease the cost uh you know the amount that you can get in wow it's it's just a much much better approach and you know i've been working with ozone since the 70s um i worked with basil rainwright and you know and we, we were the ones that were able to show that we got just as good results doing that and then women have another canal we have our our vaginal canal which is a very powerful place to also you know insufflate with ozone so when you're when you're uh using that nozzle we put it in our mouth i do a quick snoot up the nose because you don't want to breathe this stuff um, and in the ears, it's not only killing the bacteria and the mold in there, but it's actually going in through into the bloodstream in all of those places, as well as the rectally, as you, as you bloodstream, but also the lymphatic system, you see, and right. because we will need to get it in the lymphatic system because we need to make sure we get the ozone to all tissues in the body, because the problem is, is mold. And this is where everybody gets really confused. I really get scared of the practitioner that says killing molds easy. Hmm. And the reason why that scares me is because mold has a lacuna, it has a filament, a little hook, and it attaches to your tissue everywhere in your body. So it's a systemic issue. It's in all your tissue. It's just not in your mouth to anus. It's not just in your sinuses. It's not just in your ears. 
it's throughout your entire body. So the problem is, is if you kill off the mold while it's still in your tissue, that die off those dead pieces, they're harder to get rid of and they're actually more deadly um, mm. than the mold itself. So killing the mold is not the issue. And then second step is after you actually do have a way by which to pull the mold out of the tissue into the colon or the urinary tract, then we need to meet, then we can now handle and knock down and take care of that burden. But what's nice about the ozone is the ozone is going to just help push the lymph and clean up the lymph and keep all the oxygen flowing through all the cells systemically so that you don't suffer from the ill effects of the damage from the mold or you can repair the damage because it's not just getting the mold out of the body. After you get the mold out of the body, how are you going to turn the hypothalamus back on? How are you going to turn off the inflammatory pathways? How are you going to start the regenerative processes? When you've got a down-regulated hypothalamus, we've got some much bigger problems here. Yeah. Well, our, our, our topic today is going to be how to get it out of your body. We're going to have a, a lot more to, uh, talks and podcasts about how to get it out of your house and all sorts of things. But the the, uh, the key thing about getting it out of your body, um, which I've just lost my train of thought completely because I've got mold brain. Um, Join the club. <laughs> well, it's, uh, part of what I wanted to say is the uh, the reason that we came here, the reason that we came here and I decided to leave the emergency room was because we'd already been here twice before, a couple weeks apart, and one and two day visits. And during that, I bought one of your bottles of the FNG, which is your antifungal uh, mold juice, you know. And um, I've been putting that on my uh, uh, ankles where I have... Uh, uh, varicose veins. I've had very seriously awful colored varicose veins since I was 18 years old. And I started using this stuff in one bottle. That was a big bottle, but a one bottle and it is 85% gone. Okay. So, now look, at, you sent me a text four days after you put that on and said that there was such a tremendous, in four days. I mean, I was yeah. so surprised. I, I was teaching my PhD class at the time and I actually took the phone and showed the text there. I said, okay, this guy only three times a day you know, just so you can see all the wide variety of uses there is for this stuff, because that's really nothing short of phenomenal, truly. Well, and I think this is uh, some of the key things about having the mold in your body that we need to cover is that, you know, I turned 56 when this happened to me. And I, I know for the last five and a half years, I've been in an extremely dangerously moldy place. But I have been exposed to and been toxified by mold, I believe, Basically, since birth, I mean, I was born in Western Pennsylvania. Then I went to uh, live two years on a ship in the United States Navy. Then I went to a very moldy island out in the middle of the Atlantic, and now I live in Western Pennsylvania again. It's mold in every basement, and here in Toledo, it's just the same. But when I saw the difference in those varicose veins, I knew when the, the emergency room doctor said to me, "Mold doesn't cause heart attacks," she had no freaking clue what she was talking about. And that's why I came to you. And so that's what we're going to talk about, the very specific protocol that okay. you want to use to okay. get the mold. Because we're going to cover how to get it out of the house and everything else. So right. we want to right. keep... And, and, and that's important, Ben, because here's the thing is, you know, doing this mold protocol, although it's extremely effective and it can be done while you're living in that toxic soup, absolutely can be done. You're not going to even break even. If you're, if you're still living in that environment, and here's the simple thing. You want to not spend a lot of money on testing. You can just leave your house for a weekend and see if you start to feel better. If you do, guess what? You've got an indoor air quality issue. It's just that simple. Um, so it doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. Now, cleaning it up, obviously, yes, that's for another time. So like I was explaining with the mold, the problem is, is mold attaches with a hook, line, and sinker, with a filament, with a leucana to tissue. So we need something that's the opposite of the, the polarity charge, the opposite charge to the mold so that we can pull it out of the tissue and get it into the GI tract where we can then evacuate it from the body using various means. So the first thing that you must do is you must, you must make sure that you have an empty stomach, okay? Because otherwise this particular substance will be attracting um, other food molecules instead of pulling out the mold. Mm, okay. So what I found in doing my research, and the, the majority of this research originally came from, and I want to give them kudos, and I've worked with them, done some testing with them, gotten a lot of my information from Dr. Richie Shoemaker. Um, and he's on the East Coast during that hysteria outbreak. He was all, His office was just getting flooded, and it was a myriad of health issues. You know, someone was having cardiovascular issues. Somebody else was having digestive issues. Somebody else was having insomnia. 
And it turns out that it was the Fisteria outbreak that was the underlying cause to all of this. So he got in and discovered something called the biotoxic biotoxin pathway. And that really will show you how um, the dysregulation of hypothalamic control factors turns on all the inflammatory pathways and actually can downregulate all glandular function. Mm -hmm. Who's ever system is the weakest yours is your cardiovascular so that's why we get different outcomes with different people okay he says he can absolutely pull this mold out of the tissue using csm now what that is is that's a cholesterol med that's very toxic so what i did because i don't like i will not use the meds as you well know because i'm not right. trying to put a toxin in with the toxin right. which is why he says he can't cure people of mold poisoning but he can stop them from getting any sicker well i love when someone tells me that they can't do something <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just slow down, man. <laughs> I just love that. That's like so much fun. It like lights that fire under my butt because you know, doing this for 50 years, you get kind of bored. So I had a personal issue with all this because I got bit by a brown recluse spider that almost killed me. It's the same pathway. So mm -hmm. I was on a personal mission to try to get my health back to what I expected it to be. Everybody else still thought I was super going. I'm like, no, you guys don't understand. You know, I couldn't even walk into the mall to take my daughter shopping for her school clothes without wearing a mask. And even if I did wear a mask, cause what I would absorb through my skin and my ears and my eyes, um, mm -hmm. I would be sick for two weeks. I mean, I would get, make myself get up and function, but it was everything I could to cattle prod myself to do this. And I mean, there's just a lot of things that I wasn't able to do and recovery was always very, very slow going. So anyway, fast forward, I find Richie Shoemaker. It's about um, 10 years after my spider bite and I'm realizing Okay, this guy is basically answered what I feel is the missing link to all the questions I've had in my head when it comes to medicine. He absolutely nailed it. Um, so he uses the CSM as the magnet to pull the mold out of the body into the colon. Where okay. the, he, he then uses you know various antibiotics and this type of stuff. So our protocol, I, I went out and I searched, and this took me about another eight years, I'm going to say. 1999 anyway i'm getting my mask read up must be the mold frame but the, the point's going to remain the same and that is that i went i looked up the charge of the csm and then i went through a huge data bank bank because i do frequency medicine and i'm trying to find what would be the uh the natural analog uh you know they had the same charge so what i came up with was kytosan okay and so i started going out and and, and teaching how kytosan can pull mold out of tissue very responsibly very nicely. And then Nutricology came out with a microchitosan, which is even better. But you know, if you can't get your hands on Nutricology's microchitosan, I'm telling you, chitosan will do the same trick. Now, the problem with, yes. It's okay. called, some people call it chitosan. Um, okay. I pronounce it chitosan. Yeah, I can see that really well. People will be able to see that. Yeah. What you do is you wake up in the morning, you've got an empty stomach. So this is a good time to start this. You're going to, depending on your body size and on your mold burden, you have to be careful this can constipate you because it's such a strong binder so you have to make sure you're keeping your bowels moving while you're doing this because we don't want you reabsorbing these po poisons so first we have to make sure that you know you've got enough magnesium and maybe colonics that's what you guys are doing is the clonics. so we just guarantee right. we're getting this stuff the, the colon moving through this whole process um but you take that microchitosan on an empty stomach and then you're going to wait you're going to wait 20 to 30 minutes and then you're going to take a very specific enzyme because what happens with a lot of the pathogens that are morphogenic they're, they're they're they they're just they change shapes they change forms and they become very stealthy and they end up what would be the equivalent like a walnut husk around them so no matter what you do dynamite or anything whatever you use you can't get to the little critter that's inside the walnut husk mm. so we have to take an enzyme to break this down um mm. the, the enzyme my enzyme of choice is biofilm detox Okay. Showed, yeah, that's the one right. that I choose from Dr. Dale out in California. I just like the way she put all the enzymes together. That's not to say that you can't just get serapeptidase or we have some Candex and Candida Ease. We have other formulas specifically for that biofilm on the mold, but I just find that this one, I mean, I've had some people that are chronic um, Candida overgrowth patients and they've tried everything in the health food store. They've even gone as far as trying Diflucan and some of the other um, products that are on the market, but they always end up with the candida overgrowth. And this particular product, I'm happy to say, I mean, unto itself has actually cleared up some people's um, chronic, you know, 30 year old candida problem. Wow. So, 
So, so I, I, I kind of stick with this. But again, if I don't have this, remember, I didn't have this. I sent you Candex and Repair Gold, my your first round. Right, right, right. Because I didn't have the biofilm. And I'm going to tell you that's going to work. I just feel this is, okay. in my experience, this is going to be the best one. So if you can't get this one, go ahead and use the serapeptidase and some of the other enzymes that are that are famous for breaking down this biofilm. The biofilm is also, you know, if you get plaque on your teeth, that's a biofilm. If you see a, if okay. you see a rock in the water and it has like that mossy stuff and you just can't even scrub that off, that's a biofilm. So people can understand what this might be. Okay. All right, so now you've taken that biofilm and then you're going to have to give that 20 minutes to break down the walnut husk. So you've pulled, you've used the microchitosan to pull the mold into your, into your GI tract. And then you're going to use the biofilm to break down the walnut husk. Now wow. you've exposed the mold. Now is when we're going to actually hit it. And my method of choice is always going to be homeopathics. When it comes mm. to a pathogenic burden, I also, I'm a PhD in homeopathy and I love homeopathy. I, I find it extremely effective and really easy to use. I choose three different remedies. I choose one that's going to be a remedy that's a breathe remedy. So it's going to take care of all the stuff that you can actually breathe in through, which is how most people get mold is right. going to be they breathe it. So this is going to help clear up anything that you're going to get that's going to that can become a trap protein that can create what I mean it cracks me up. You're allergic to mold. Yeah, show me somebody that isn't allergic to mold. I mean it's funny, but it really is an allergy. You're creating an immune response from this allergy. Okay. So sure. we we want to hit that. Then the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm giving you all the phenolics and all the single remedies that actually because these are actually going to be the the actual product itself. So this is actually mold, birch, all the different pollens and molds mm. in the air. Where the next one in the series, okay, I don't know if you can see that you have that there also. Can you yeah, see I that? Okay. It, I don't think these are showing up, but we'll put the we'll put the uh, list up in the Yeah, uh, so this is Dr. Dale again. I I've, I've been I've gone to her college. I have another degree I got from her. I don't know. I have so many degrees and I can't even count them, but went and, and learned about her remedies and um her whole college is based around her remedies and her how she uses them. I use them a little bit differently than she does, but I do like her remedies. So we're going to take care of all the re all the homeopathic remedies that are going to be for pollens for molds. Okay, so we've got those, and then I finish up because when you have mold that's been in your body for a long time, a lot of times you end up craving sweets and carbohydrates, which is going to feed the candida. We always see a candida overgrowth as well. So then I'm going to go ahead and take and use the candida ease. Okay. Yeah, we which see. Which is going to be for all. Which is going to be for all the candida. So now we're hitting that mold issue from all angles. Now with these homeopathic remedies, you take five drops and you hold it in your mouth for thirty seconds. You can take them all at the same time, or you could spread them apart. Um, some people prefer to take, you know, one at a time, thirty seconds, swallow the next one, or you can do them all at the same time. You're going to hold it for thirty seconds, and then after you swallow that, you're going to wait. 15, preferably 30 minutes before you eat or drink anything except for water. Okay. Now, the, here's the only thing when you're using homeopathic remedies, caffeine has to be 20 minutes away. You can't be using synthetic shampoos and perfumes because they will take away from efficacy, which you're going to have to get away from those anyway, because the problem, once you have a mold issue in your body, you then become um, what I call, well, a lot of people call it multiple chemical sensitivity. You become hypersensitive mm -hmm. because it's, you've had so much neurological damage and because of what's happened to the um, immune system that you become hypersensitive. So you're going to have to get away from all those anyway. You're going to have to put those all to rest anyway. But that's the only downside to homeopathics is you have to stay away from like x-rays and perfumes and dryer sheets and caffeine. And Well, I don't really see that as a big downside, to be honest. It never was a big part of my life, any of those things. Um, but I did find myself last night, we went over to the Mexican restaurant right around the corner, which has a great vegetarian menu. And they, whatever they had cleaned the place with the night before, it was still in the air too much for me to be in there. And most uh, don't even smell it. They don't smell anything. And I, it hit me as soon as I walked in the door. Well, the problem is, is their sinuses, your olfactory only has so many receptor sites in it. Hmm. So once those synthetic, those plastics, those synthetic estrogens, they're called endoc environmental endocrine disruptors, xenobiotics. Um, there's a solvents, there's a million cleaners, there's a million different names for them, but they all fit into the category of petrochemicals. Mm. Once so many of the olfactory receptors get filled up with them, you can't smell them anymore. So even though you're getting the same ill effect from it, you don't recognize it because your snoot, which is supposed to be, you know, warning, warning, Will Robinson, it's supposed to have you alerted to there's a problem here. 
that's they, they, that they've lost that sense you see and then another problem that ends up happening is they it depletes the zinc and when you deplete zinc out of your system you lose sense of taste and sense of smell yeah. which is how people are able to keep getting exposed to these things and they just don't realize it and then what ends up happening is once your cup floweth over and you start expressing symptoms you have now reached what is called your toxic burden okay and so now you have to work a lot lot harder to just break even once you've reached your toxic burden it takes at least 10 times as much nutrition supplementation and hard work just to break even that's not to get better okay and that's what people need to understand you have to look at your blood sugar if you're not keeping your blood sugar balanced throughout the day you're going to have some severe problems yeah. if you're eating gluten if you're eating sugar if you're not drinking enough water if you're oh. not cleaning your sinuses we've got to get your si oh. let's think about it dark deep moist area perfect breeding ground same thing with the ear canals so if we're not cleaning yeah. those sinuses and i prefer do you have your zleer with you there I don't. Okay, um, so it's a particular i'm yeah. looking around hey linda can you grab my zleer off the top shelf over there lovey thank you baby okay so this is the one i like i'm gonna tell you why so you're gonna that's this one here yeah x okay. or Xlear or yeah however you want to pronounce it i make up my own pronunciations with everything yeah. so i'm just taking i just you know, you know i just right three or four squirts each nostril it burns that means i got something going on there's a burn there that means i got hit with something well wow. I'm, re I'm remediating black mold out of my mom's house right now she had a chimney leak that we couldn't find and so i'm dealing with the same issues as fen's dealing dealing with and it's pretty crazy um and even with all the tools i have you know i'm feeling the burn in there so yep. what this is going to do is you're going to want to use this for the first month you know like five to seven times a day because you're going to be breaking through layers in there so not only will this knock down and clean out the burden but it'll coat this so you can't get reinfected so obviously i waited too long between squirts if i'm getting a burn didn't i now yeah. i don't want to swallow this right i don't want to swallow this and i want to try to keep it up in that sinus cavity as long as i can so i kind of move it around in there okay i don't, I don't want to pull it down unless i'm going to spit it out or blow it out with the tissue through my nose and of course i probably don't even have <laughs> could you give me that just that rag right on top there I'll keep the camera on me for a minute <laughs> yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna expel it i'm gonna try to, my goal is to try to keep it in there but i could it could oh, make okay. me sneeze or something real quick and okay. i could need to blow my nose but i mean this is something that you're gonna have to do the other thing is you know cleaning your eyes because that mold gets behind your eyeballs and it gets all in that ocular area and we get a lot of eyesight problems in fact the number one test for mold toxicity is something called a VCS, visual contrast screening. You can Google it and you can pull the chart up. And mm -hmm. what ends up happening is you have a hard time distinguish, distinguishing light, dark, white, black, gray. And mm -hmm. I, I will tell you that I can I read out in the bright sunlight, but if I get in a dark area, I have to put on my readers. That's mold poisoning. Okay, wow. that's one of the first tests that we do to see if wow. somebody has mold poisoning is we do a visual contrast screening. So if you have a problem with the light and the dark and the grays differentiating them, you just automatically know you have it. Now, there are a lot of tests out there for mold. Not all of them are very accurate. Some of them are very expensive. When I was working with Richie Shoemaker, since he was the first person to put together a profile for what mold po poisoning looks like, we our patients had to pay $5,000 for those. Wow. Not too many people could afford it. Wow. Okay. There are some other ways out there and means that aren't so expensive. But the thing is, is you already know you have it. So why don't we do why don't we clean ourselves up and test and see if we got it all and i think you'd be losing using your money a lot more effectively that way yeah but well and then you know because you're going to start feeling better you're going to just know there's not going to be a question in your mind right and and well and i can tell you i've been here a week and I, well almost a week now and uh it, it's amazing I, the color has returned to my feet uh colors returned to my face oh yeah your face you don't look so gray and pasty you look so much better yeah. No, this camera maybe doesn't bring it out as well, but um, I, I can tell everybody, well, first of all, mold is so ubiquitous. If you live in Western Pennsylvania or Toledo or anywhere really east of the Mississippi, 100% guaranteed you have mold in your system. Is that an accurate statement? I would say absolutely yes. And, and just, I mean, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Because here's the thing. When I went shopping for houses, when I moved up from Florida back here to Toledo, my hometown, my husband and I, he was down in Orlando still holding down the fort. And I looked at 500 houses. There were only five that I bid on. And it wasn't that those five houses didn't have mold. It was that I wouldn't spend hundreds, tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars cleaning them up and keeping them clean. Because a lot of the, the construction 
wasn't built with mold in mind. So keeping them clean is virtually impossible. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why we definitely need to go through, you know, I, I have people, well, I had my house clean and then they tell me what they did. And I'm like, oh my God, you just made it a hundred times more toxic. This is scary at best. People, the people are catching on, the companies are catching on, but they still have a long way to go. Yeah. So people need to be really careful though when, uh, especially people think, oh, just hit it with bleach. And that's like the ooh, worst thing. Ooh, you, the ooh, worst ooh. thing. Absolutely worst thing you could possibly do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's let's just wrap this up here by saying that if you, anybody listening, if you have any condition at all, uh, that especially if your doctor can't figure out what is the cause, or even if he has a name for whatever it is, you say that 75 to 90 percent chance the underlying root cause is mold. Is that right? Yeah, but what's he, he's gonna he's gonna laugh at you because everybody's right. got mold, right? Right, right. But if, if especially things like fibromyalgia or the big thing I noticed with Linda and with Kitty Nono is a complete loss of appetite. If we hadn't brought Kitty here, she would have just wasted away. She stopped eating. So things like fibromyalgia, uh, sinus infections, those are the most obvious ones, right? Digestion, uh, low testosterone, um, uh, dig digestive disturbances really end up being huge, um, stabbing pain, shooting pains. Um, systemic pain, um, headaches, sleep disturbances. Or, yeah. I, I mean, I could talk for hours. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's uh, the, the most important thing that I want to convey to everybody is that there's a very, very high chance that whatever it is you are Depression. suffering. Yeah. Depression is huge. <laughs> Anxiety. Because what ends up happening is you end up going to what most medical professionals would call an anxiety attack and truly that's just uh the analogy i like to give so i've got a bug here and i've got my bug spray i'm a trigger spray the bug and what does it do it flops around like that because of the neurotoxin mm. so the same thing happens to us when we get a burden and then someone comes along with a perfume or they just clean the restaurant and then what happens is you go into what most medical professionals would call an anxiety attack but it's not an anxiety attack it's just once again you just maxed out your toxic burden and your nervous system it's like you've been sprayed with an insecticide oh. You're just you're dying you know you're got the insecticide problem well i can tell you you know the, having walking out of the uh er was probably uh, the scariest thing i've ever done uh I and, bet. I and then bet. Drive here the drive here was well you know a four-hour drive took us 24 hours because i keep retoxing myself in the van but yeah, I just, tell, tell them what that means because that is one of the most overlooked things. Yeah, in the vehicle. we're gonna we're gonna have a whole podcast, I think, just okay. on the vehicle and, and how I kept retoxing myself all this this whole week. Yeah. Um, but there's mold in the ventilation system. So uh, you're such an amazing clinic here. The first thing they did was they put me on ozone. The second thing that you did was you send the team out there and cleaned out our van. <laughs> I mean, it's just brilliant and amazing. So that's why I knew it was worth making the trip here. But let's uh, let's tell people how to get in touch with us here, and uh, we're going to have the website and everything up on uh, all of the uh, abouts on there. But uh, really, you can help people uh, remotely. You can do remote calls like we're doing here, although it's in the same building, and uh, you can you can mail order products and all that sort of thing, right? Yeah, and you're not going to beat our prices. I mean, one of the things that we pride ourselves on is really trying to make sure that you know we get everybody the medicine that they need. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you, you can't beat our prices because a lot of times with the health food store knowledge that and our vitamin consultants and all of our nature paths and registered dietitians and massage therapists and, and psychiatrists, I mean, we've got every kind of practitioner you can imagine that practices here and you get that information for free with the products. You, we don't ask you to pay for that. And so that's how we can try to try to help you guys get what you need. And then you're also supporting mom and pop and you're keeping a place alive that can help a lot of people. So we really appreciate it as all we ask is that, you know, you do try to get the, the products from us and we do ship to every place in the United States. And I think that's a fair energy exchange that way then. Well, it's a, uh, it's fantastic knowledge. Uh, you know, I trust you. I did trust you with my life and um, I can now say without any shadow of a doubt that mold is as serious as a heart attack. So, um, Oh yeah. And that'll but, be your next t-shirt, right? Yeah, that's my next t-shirt. <laughs> um, break the mold one sport at a time. That's there what we do. Well, let's uh, let's wrap this up, Charmaine. It's a real pleasure as always. So we're going to do a lot more of these. Charmaine Bassett Trim with Anyana Kai in Toledo, Ohio. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. All right. Well, that's it for uh, this week, everybody. Uh, check in on the mold blog that I'll be putting up on our website. And uh, 
Until then, you just be careful out there.